Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and thanks so much for joining me. In this week's never seen before training video, I'm going to show you how to take data from unlimited filled out PDF forms and transfer all that data from any folder on your computer into a single Excel table and in just one click. It's going to be an incredible training. Alrighty, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover in this training video. So here's what we want to do. And basically in other videos, we have covered how to take data and put those into fillable PDF forms. And in this particular video, what I want to do is I want to take PDFs that have already been filled out and I want to bring that data into this and when I say PDF video let's go ahead and take a look at what kind of form we're looking for and we have a specific form where we filled out some data and we have here in this PDF form that has already been pre-filled out we've got some uh, basic information name address city email and some basic we're not going to worry about the rest of the data here but there in this particular form there could be a lot of data we're just going to focus on the main data and so what I want to do is I want to take this data along with other forms that I have in the specific folder and I want to take all of that data and put it into this PDF and so we have a folder here and we've got four different filled out PDF forms along with the data source and so what I want to happen is I want to take data from each of these four forms and I want to put all of that data into the first four rows of this table and I want to do all that in just one click. First we, we have set a folder here uh, that is our PDF folder so we've gone ahead and set that and that's the same as this folder here uh, our test PDF folder so that is the information and here's basically what I want to happen when I click this button here extract all PDFs I wanted to open up the Foxit reader which it's doing right now and I wanted to find that form I wanted to pull all those forms data and I wanted to extract the data from all those forms in one fell swoop and it's doing it right now and it's going to extract that data into a CSV format it's going to take that data and put it right in here just like it did now and that is all I have to do so it's a great trick and it's a great time saver in fact just one click this can work for unlimited numbers of PDF forms and let me go ahead and show you how we do it the important thing here is we need to use the free Foxit uh, reader and that is a really really excellent PDF tool that allows us to do what we want to do by extracting the data from those forms and I'll go ahead and show you that is the free Foxit PDF reader and you can get it from here I have included a link in the application so you don't have to worry about memory and I've put it here under the Foxit reader there's a link right here which will get you right to that so the first thing you want to do is to download that from this site click the free download just go ahead and download it and then install it and once it's installed on your computer you will then have your application installed you want to remove any other one-time messages that come up so you want to open your PDF file here and uh, let's say you may get some one-time messages so make sure you uh, do not have any of those messages that might appear here so that when you open up a PD form just the PDF forms open up with no other uh, messages or highlights or or anything like that Secondly, you want to make sure that your form is set to the default. You want to make sure it's set to the default form. And let's go ahead and set ours under the desk under our desktop. You want to make sure that it is the default reader. In my case, it already is. But if you want to do it, you'll right click, open with, and then let's go ahead and move this a little bit higher up so you can see it. Right click and open with and then you want to choose another app select choose another app even if it's already displayed and make sure that you select always use this app to open PDF files and select that Foxit Reader 9.1 you want to select that and then click OK that'll make it your default PDF and that's a very important step we want to make sure that it is default that will be helpful in pulling up data when you pull it up although it may not be required on every system it is certainly helpful so set it as your default and you'll know it's your default when you see this little Foxit PDF icon on each of your uh, data and it depends on your view maybe you know if you have it on your 
details view here, you're still going to see the icon here. So that's very important. Now also what's important is in this folder that you've set, you want to make sure that each of the PDF forms follow the same format. In other words, you don't want to have different uh, PDF forms in that folder. All PDF forms should have the same exact form. Perhaps they're filled out differently, however they should be the same form. That is also important. As we're going we're gonna to teach Excel to just read one specific form type. If you have multiple form types, maybe you'll want to have multiple instances of this application and then each one setting for a different folder. So what we want to do is we want to have this folder for one specific form type. We can just click on that and browse for that and we put it on our desktop. So we'll just select that folder and then click OK that is going to set the folder and so all we have to do this is a relatively simple thing um, what let's go ahead and pull in and let's go manually what we're actually doing and so I can show you here is our PDF and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going forms right and this is all done on automatic form form to sheet and combine forms to a sheet combine forms to a sheet now that all pulls up this screen but what I've done so in other words you we're gonna use send keys and send keys in VBA is gonna automate this process form form to sheet combine form that's three steps right however Fox is such an amazing application we can actually set those three steps into one specific a hotkey and I'll show you how we did that once you have your reader open you want to go into the customize the quick access toolbar here and you'll want to click on more commands and now under keyboard keyboard right we're gonna create a shortcut and then what we're gonna be working with is forms here under form and what we want to do is I want to go I want to create a shortcut for combine forms to sheet so that means I want one shortcut to automatically pull that pop up up and we can assign that right now I've got a control E but you can come here and click control E and then assign it or you can click control Q if if it's already assigned you're gonna get this assigned so you want to make sure you find something control R let's see control Y we've got that so if it's available then you can click assign I'll keep it at control E for my purposes but uh, keep this in mind control E that is what you're gonna to to remember we're gonna use send keys in VBA to automate that so we're gonna leave it at control E that's the way I have it now so I'll cancel out of this let's go ahead and double check to show you again click on here under the quick access more commands and then under keyboard form combine forms to a sheet control E is our, our assigned short key and what that is gonna do so when I press control E it's gonna pop up you see how that works so that's what we're gonna automate so that means I want to do I want to pull that up I want this screen this is the screen I want because I want to, what I want to do is I want to add files then I want to add all of these files by selecting all and then I want to open them and then I want to export so that's what and I'm gonna export it to this and I'm gonna overwrite it and that's what I, so that's the process but that's what we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna tab over here and click no we don't want to see it so that is the process that we're gonna automate in VBA so the first important thing was I want to automate this step this step and this step so those three clicks one two three we're gonna automate it in one shortcut key and we're gonna call that control E so that's what we're gonna do so let's go into the VBA editor and see how we have gone about that so far and we'll walk you through the entire process this one is actually not too difficult so we're gonna go through that it's relatively simple there's only two macros there's one to browse the folder and one to extract all PDFs. so we've been able to do that in in just two macros so into the developers tab under visual basic if you do not have the developers tab available or not visible click on the file and under the options under the customize ribbon you can go ahead and see that here the developers you want to make sure that is selected there alt f11 will also get you there into the developers tab and here are our two macros here we have one module PDF macros we have just two macros this one is going to get the folder 
and we've been over this a few times before, all this macro does is allows us to determine the folder and then it places that folder in F3. F3 is where our folder is located. That's all it's going to do. F3. So that macro is pretty simple. We've assigned that macro to this browse button by clicking here, clicking inside to the individual shapes, clicking assign macro, and you'll see right here get PDF folder has been assigned. And that's actually been assigned to the button and the icon itself. So it's been assigned to both. And we do that simply by assigning the macro to the group. Assigning the macro to the group automatically assigns it to the individual button and the individual icon simply by clicking assign macro and get PDF folder, then clicking OK. So that's the simple one. That just is going to allow us to set, because we need to tell Excel where is it going to look for the PDFs inside the folder. So that's why we have that folder set, and that's an important part. That covers that macro, so it's very simple. That's a simple macro. Now our only other macro is going to is going to walk us through the entire process. It's going to, it's going to basically do this. It's going to launch the PDF program. It's going to launch this program. It's going to do Control E, it's, which is going to launch this and this and this, right? It's going to add the files. It's going to export to a CSV. Then we're going to take that CSV files and we're going to bring them right in here. That's the process and that's what we're going to automate so that you can take extract data from any PDF form and limited PDF forms, bring that data into your Excel table in just one click. So let's get back into that and walk you through each step of the macro so I show you exactly how that's done. First in this macro we've titled extract PDF data and we're going to extract the PDF app, that's the application, in our case it's Foxit PDF Reader, as a variant. We also have a few strings, PDF folder is the location and the export file. We've got two strings, the folder, that's this folder here, right, that whole file path. And we also have our extract, expo, export fo, file, that is the file that we're going to be extracting. In this case it would be data source, data source is that entire file name. So for that's our data source, that's our export and contains all of our data. When we open this up, we will see uh, some data in here. It's just, a, it's just a bunch of data. Let's go ahead and make these columns very small. So you can basically see it just contains all the data in our four forms, in a raw format, in a CSV format. That's all we need. When we bring that into Excel, it, we then be, have our Excel formatted. So there is no need to do any formatting on this. And so this just contains all of our data here, as you can see. So that's what that is. So that's the file path that we need for that. So we also have some long, some whole numbers, client row, customer row. We'll go through these individually. And we're going to be working primarily with sheet one. That is our client sheet. So we're going to be using if with sheet one. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we do have a folder in F3. If that is empty, we need to instruct the user to give them a message box, please browse free folder. And we're going to run this macro for them. We're going to help them. We're going to guide them instead of just saying click on the button. We're going to actually do it for them. So that's very helpful. So we'll run this macro, which runs this macro right here, and it browses for the folder. So, and let's go ahead and right now I want to make sure to, so once they have the folder, we can probably exit the sub here. Just in case they don't select a folder, I don't want the rest of the sub to run, correct? If they don't, if they select, if they go through this macro and cancel it, I don't want the rest of this to run. So we're exiting this sub makes them click the button one more time, just to be sure. So now that they've gone through that process, they've got an extract folder where all their PDFs are located. We then go in, we then assign that folder, that entire location to this variable here, PDF folder as a string. So we're going to store that. Now we need to know our export file, the file, remember that's going to always be called data source.csv. It's always going to be called that is the default name assigned by Fox. So we're going to keep with that default name. No need to change that. And we're going to make sure that that located in our PDF folder. So we need to assign that entire file name, which is the folder we're going to store it here, along with the name here.
And the reason is what I want to do is I want to delete that before because we're going to be bringing in a new source. So I want to make sure that any source that exists in this folder, I want to make sure this is deleted it's because we're going to be bringing in a new one. Maybe we've added PDF forms. So it's important to delete any uh, CSV that was there before. So that this three lines does that. In fact, just one line deletes it. But if there is no if there is no export file, if there is no CSV file in that folder, it could create an error. So we have wrapped that in on air resume next and on air go to zero. This ensures that it's deleted if it exists and if it's not deleted, no error will appear. And next up, we need to launch our PDF program. I need to, to launch it. I need to do that, basically launch this and our PDF app, our shell will locate this. Keep in mind this file here could be different for you. If it doesn't work, check this, right? And the best way to do that is simply by right clicking and um, right clicking. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you in just a second. Properties so that I'll bring it, I'll bring it to your attention here. Okay, well, all I did is right click on the shortcut and it is this start in you want to make sure or the target either way the target is what you want sorry the target so just copy this you can use the quotes if possible this is what you want let's see so the target is where you want in case it's not in a different folder for you you can find it right here under the right clicking the shortcut that you find on your desktop and looking for target and you can find that location so it should be it should be uh, this but if it's not then you'll want to make sure to put it and we want it to launch in normal focus this is going to launch the application this we don't need as long as as long as it's launched and brought to the present maybe I'm going to keep this if the program is it's launched but it's not in the viewable area you may need activate so I'm going to keep this here in other words once we launch it once we launch it it should be in front if it's not in front, if it's in the background, you may need something like App Activate, which will actually activate it. So you may need this, although, however, uh, it seems to be working just fine on my machine. I'll leave this in, but I'm going to leave it commented out. Next up, we need to go through the process of uh, sending the keys. So next up, right, once it's launched, what's the next thing? You know, let me uh, let me go ahead and half the screen so you can we can go through the process and we can see both of them at the same time. All right. And I'll split this for you so you can see. All right, very good. Now that it's split, so we can see both. So what we want to do now is we're going to wait a second. We want to make sure we give it a moment. And then we're going to do a send keys. This little icon, this is control, control, E, control, E. What does that do? Control, E. It launches this so when we send those keys to them it's going to do this now what's the next thing we need we need to add files but you see that little underline right there that means if we just click a it's going to add the file it's going to launch our open screen right it's going to perfect it's going to launch our open screen so now we know we just need to click the a so our next step wait a little bit and click a send a that's the next step so send keys we'll do that so now we're ready now we're at this step let me minimize this so you can see we can follow along in vba so now what do we want to do well now we don't our my folder defaulted here right it's because of, but we don't necessarily know where it's going to open up it could open up here it could open up on a different folder, right? So we don't really know. So we need to make sure that it opens up on that. So that's an important part. And uh, as long as it's set to default, it should open up automatically there. So let's go back. And uh, here we are in this. And the next thing we want to do is shift tab. The plus is the shift, right? I need to select all of these. I need to select all of these. And what I'll probably do for you is I'm going to add, I'm going to add another line in here that's going to set the default location to make sure that the location is whatever your location is. So we'll, we'll ensure that. And uh, so the next step is once I'm once once let's go through that one more time. Once we click add files, what do I need to happen? I need to select all, right? But I need to do it through keyboard shortcuts. How can we do that? Well, let's see. Shift Tab. Now we're here, right? 
and Control A. That's going to select them all. Shift, so those two steps, Shift Tab, Control A. So we need to do that in Excel. So we can do that here. Here is the Shift. This is the Shift, plus is the Shift and Tab. So Shift Tab, wait one second. Control, this is the Control, and this is A on Thank you. So Control A. Now we've selected them all. Now what do we need to do? Now we need to tab. Tab. Oh, sorry. Here, okay, we've all and click tab. And we need to open them. And we can click use N for open, right? Or we can tab. So we have a few options there. We need to open that. That's important. So under, after we've shift tab, we have tab, 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 right? Or we can do N. So we've done tab 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 that's going to put us right here on the open it's going to put us right here right here and now we want to click enter enter so that's going to add those forms to there so here is our enter so we just walk it step by step by step and a lot of you may have different configurations you may want to do different things the idea here is you want to put away your mouse when you're trying to map these steps put away your mouse and figure out how to do it through your keyboard only I get a lot of questions on I want to close the application I want to open the application I want to switch pages or switch sheets or I want to do a lot of things and I want to put that in VBA so my my suggestion is always this put away your mouse take the batteries out put it far away figure out how to do it with your keyboard only and then write down those steps write it down you know some helpful tints anytime you see uh, underline like a you know that just the word a will help so and then write down those steps and then take those steps and put them into the send keys and the second step would be wait now add a lot of time on these wait now two three four whatever you want to add that's going to slow your code down so you can actually follow it when it and if you're having issues you can follow it to see where your error is so both of those keys write them down write down your steps transfer those steps into send keys and then add wait now after each line so you can follow the steps and that's going to be really helpful when you're pretty much trying to do anything using send keys okay so now that we've pressed enter now that we've pressed enter we want to move to uh, we want to put the export so we've clicked export let's see shift tab enter here and so what we want to do is we want to click export that's our next step so clicking that it's going to export now where do we want to export this to so here we are at this step here now we're here we want to export our remember our export file contains contains that this link right here it's this our export file contains that right here so we want to we're basically going to take that and put it in here and it also includes our so it's going to look just like this and then this so our export file is going to look just like that that's all and then we're going to click then we want to tab 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 and save or we can do control enter control enter also works so we we've chosen control enter control enter I'm gonna do it right now control enter there we go now it's done okay so now we've got this screen up so we've done control enter here we are here now we're gonna wait a little bit and now we're going to click N N. okay so oh sorry now we're gonna click control enter wait two seconds and click N N is for no so no done so that closes that screen and close this this key when you use send crease there's a little bug in in Excel that turns off your number lock you know that key that on your number keyboard this for some reason it turns it off this turns it right back on so that way your number lock is enabled I always use that at the end of it so that's it now we have our file exported right now our file is here right here it is here we just added that right now so now we're good now we have the file now we need to go into Excel and get that data now I need to what I need to do is I need to go in Excel what I want to do is I want to create a data connection and I want to we have a lot of data sources we'll all delete them but what you want to do is you want to create a data connection and you want to create it from a text 
right? And you want to click here, right? This is what I want to happen, but I want to do it through VBA. And I want to create that import. I want to import that and I want to put it on sheet two. So we're going to go through this step. We're getting their comma, comma, separated values. So we're going to use comma. Remember that next next, And where do we want to put that? Well, I want to put that not on the existing worksheet. So let's click two. I want to put it right on sheet two, A1. This is where it's going to go. Sheet two, A1. And then we're going to click OK. If you look at the properties, we do want, we're going to add some properties and we want to make sure to overwrite the existing cells. Clicking OK and A1 and OK. We're good. And now our data will fill here. And when we have four, it'll show all four. So that is how it's done. So that's how we're going to do it within VBA. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all the data and we're going to bring it over into this table right here. All right, so back in to our VBA we go. And let's go ahead and pull up. Now that we're done with our Foxit, we have all of our data. We can expand this a little bit here. So let's go back into so now we're gonna wait two seconds and now what I want to do is I want to clear in sheet two I want to clear out the existing data so what I want to do is it whatever data is in here from previously I want to clear it out I just want to take it delete and clear that all out and delete the query there as well so we're gonna delete that so we want to start with a fresh data there so that's very important so we've done that clear the existing data all right, we don't need we don't need to delete the active workbook, but we may need to in the future if there's a conflict. So I've left that in commented out for us purposes. And now we need to export the file under PDF. So we need to export it. Remember we talked about that data, right? Export it. We need to get that from text and we need to export it. What are we going to do? We're going to export this file right here. So we need to do that right within VBA. So with sheet two, we're going to set up a query. We're going to add a query and we're going to give it a connection. We're going to connect. It's going to be a text file, CSV in our cases, and the export file. Remember, this is the entire file name that includes the folder and the file. Our export name equals the folder plus our file name. So it includes everything. So that's what we're going to be exporting. And where's the destination? Where do we want that data to go? Sheet two, range A1. That's where we want to start. Now we're going to assign it a name, data source. We're going to assign that name. And we are going to, we want the field names. We're going to assign it different we're going to have row numbers, we certain things that we want, but the most important thing is we do want to make sure that we overwrite the existing cells. Remember, we selected that option to overwrite, and we want that same option right here. Overwrite the existing data. Everything else is pretty much stead. We have basic formulas that you can uh, settings. For example, this is going to be a comma. Remember we selected comma, comma delimited file, so that's true because we're not using semicolon or space or tab, so those are all set to false. This one is based on commas, so that's how it is. And then we just said the RAID, these are all going to be general data types. Our data types don't matter because when we bring it in to our main table, then it's already formatted. So it doesn't really matter what our formats are on sheet two because this is already formatted here for our data. So that's the beauty of it. We don't need to worry about formats because we have pre-formatted this. This is why we keep our this is why we don't don't bring it right in here, right? We don't want what we want to do is we want a controlled import. Controlled meaning it doesn't matter what format or what columns or anything in here when we bring in the data, it's just raw data. Then we control it by bringing the data, just the data. We're not going to bring all the data, just the data we want right into here. So our format can be general. One is used for general. And uh, so that's basically it. Uh, refresh back. We don't need too much else. So we are done with our query. That covers our entire query. Now what do we want to do? Well, now we want to make sure that we get the data ready so that we can bring it in this sheet. So let's go ahead and we want to clear this out within VBA, starting in rows, starting in cell E8 and all the way down to the bottom, however far we want to go. We want to clear that data out before we bring in our, our new data. So we do that within VBA as well. So we do that with this line right here. 
Now what I need to do is I need to know the last row of the data. When we bring, let's go ahead and run that and bring some data in here so you can see. Let's go ahead and run the macro again. And uh, it's going to select all. It's going to import our into the export and we'll bring back data in here. It's going to choose all four forms. It's going to export that CSV into the folder we choose. It's going to say no and the data is going to come in. Okay. So now in sheet two, I need to know this last row, right? I need to know the last row of data. A is going to be your column. These are the names of our PDF right here. So we need to know the last row so, so that we can properly import all of the data. So we have to get that last row. That last data row is sheet two, column A. And then we use a high number to get the last row. That's here. Now what I want to do is I want to get the data into into here but there's a lot of data in here right there's a lot of there's a lot of things we don't need let me go ahead and minimize let me bring that those columns a little bit smaller so you can see right, there's a lot of data here we have and you can see the names are here so the names are up here but they're home number right we have work number here so here's your headers and the information but I only need some information right I don't need all of it what do I need let's see let's go ahead and bring this data out so we can see what we're doing okay that's the that's the uh, cell number home number so we need to, don't worry about the formats that's not important right because when we bring the data it's going to be properly formatted so I need some information but not all information but I need to know what column this data is on so let's go ahead and just number our columns here just so we can see E equals column Let me just run a formula here Okay, so we have column, and we can bring this out, right? Let's go ahead and bring it all the way to all of our data because we only want some of the data. And the reason is, look, some of it's some of it's repeated. Why is it? Why do we have a repeated name in our PDF? We do have some duplication, uh, and that's because of uh, of the way our, our form is structured. So you can see under. Let's go ahead and pull up one of the one of the intake forms here. And we'll bring that a little larger so you can see. In our form, we have the, also the names at the bottom too. So we here, you know, we've duplicated the name here. It's just a duplicate of whatever's at the top. So that's why we have them twice sometimes, but we just need one. So now we know the columns where the data is. But I want to map that to this. So I want to know that this is column 17. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can use mapping, which we've done in some other videos. I put it in row six. So when we unhide row six, you can see 26 is the state, 25 is the city, 27 is the zip code. So the same thing here. 26 is the state, 27 is the zip code, 25 is the city. So I'm mapping it. Each one of these that I've assigned is the data column. This way, what I can do is I can run through all of these from here to here. I can I can provide a loop. In fact, I can go from this column to the last column and I can figure out okay, what columns are data in here and we know what row, let's put it in. So for example, let's go ahead and, and show the columns here too because we're going to run a loop using these columns. It starts out at 5 and we are going to go all the way to I don't want to copy the format. So we will just right click paste formulas okay so it goes all the way to 14 right that's just the format not to worry so it goes from 5 to 14 so I want to run a loop saying from 5 column 5 to column 14 what I want to do is I want to say okay in row 1 of our data we're gonna and then we're gonna loop here we're gonna go from row row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 because we know the last row of data now right we know the last row we know it starts at 2 we know it goes to 5 so for each row I want to say okay in column 23 get the address in column 24 get the name so we can do that we've mapped them out here map them out so when we get to the first column, for example, we're going to run a loop 5 to 13. In the first column, I'm going to say, okay, on our data sheet, in column 33, in row 2, get the, get the last name. When we get to column 6, column 34 in our data, get the first name. So that's how we're going to do that same thing right in our, our data, our VBA. So for the custom column 5 to 14 I've just been through why we're going to go through those four columns 
we need to get the data column, right? Our data column is located in row 6 and whatever column we're in. Our data is located in row 6 and whatever, in whatever column. If we're in column 5, it's 33. If we're in column 6, our data column is 34. So we need to know what column. That helps us. That mapping helps us. Data column right here. Now we know the data column. Now we can bring our data in. So where are we going to put that data? We're going to put it in row 8 of our custom column, right? 8. Okay, so now we know now we know the column. Now we can simply copy and paste the data, right? If we know if we know that this name, let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's go ahead and get the the last name, okay? Last name. We know two and we know our last row. So what I want to do is I want to copy this in a sense copy, but we're not actually copying it, right? I want to copy this but we're going to use a direct and I want to basically paste the values right here just like that that's all I want to do we're not going to use copy and paste because we can use direct cell to cell so what I want to say is here's what I want e8 through e11 equals ag2 through ag5 right so we're going to use that that's all I'm going to say that's all I want to do and then when we go to the next one I want to say f Eight through F eleven equals A H eight through. So it's going to it's going to be a direct link. So we're just going we don't even need copy and paste. So we're going to use direct. So we know what our starting row is here. Eight plus the column, right? This is our row, our first eight plus cells, the last row. The reason we're adding six is because our they start on different. So that means that our data, our first row of data is line two. Right? Our first row of data is line eight here. We need to add six, add six. So that's very important. So that's why in VBA we add six. So our last data row plus the custom column. So basically this line of code simply goes, it goes from column to column, column, and it puts the sheet. That's all that line does. It goes from here, copies, runs the zip code. It says this, it basically says, this is equal to this. That's all it does. And then it goes to the next one. Then it goes email this. It's, it highlight like it goes is equal to this right here, wherever the email is here. So that's all that that line of code does, and it does it for it goes through each column and does exactly the same thing. And that brings our data in. So we're good with, now we have covered the data. Now what I want to do is I also want to add a link. I want to know, I want to link to that original PDF. So when I click on that, that PDF opens. I want to see the original document. And I want to add a link to that. So it's very easy. So we say, hey, I see the data, but I want to see the original document. So we put a link in there, and that's really convenient. And it's a little bonus that I added for you in there. And I want to show you how I went about doing that. And again, now we're going to run a loop from the row to the row. So we're going to go data row. We know the last data row. So we're going to run a loop now. And we want to go from data row to data row. So we're going to run a loop from 2 to 5, the last data row. So I'm going to run a loop. And what I want to do is I want to start out, I know in A, in A, A contains our document name. I know that. I know our document name. I also know the folder it's in. Right? So I know the document name and I know the folder it's in, I can create a link. So we've done just that in VBA. Going to, so we're going to say that O, O is the O is the column that we're going to be putting. O is the column. And we're going to say that O equals the PDF folder and the backslash and sheet to A in the data row. This is our document name. We just went over that. The document, that creates a path. Now we have the path. So the value is in here. That puts the entire value. So if we click on that, you can see here, it puts in the folder, right? Plus the, the forward slash or backslash, plus the form, plus the name, which we found in the column A. So it puts that in right here. So that puts it in, but it doesn't actually link. So we actually now have to use the same information and we have to create a link. And we can do that here. So let me go out of that cell, okay, and back into VBA. So now we have to create the link. Hyperlinks add, and what is the anchor? The anchor is the O and is the address, right? The, the value, 
We're going to anchor it to this cell here, O in the client row. What is the address? Well, it's the same thing, the PDF folder plus the backslash plus the value. And then we're going to text to display. What text do we want to display? Well, it's the same exact information. We want the link. You could actually, you could actually remove that. Oh, maybe that would be kind of nicer. Let's let's try that. Let's remove the PDF folder. Let's only show the document name because it's a little bit big, right? So text to display. Let's go ahead and say, okay, now I only I don't want to show the full link. I just want to show the name of the document. Let's go ahead and run that. And we'll run the whole thing and we'll see how that does. That'll just give us the document name and not the entire uh, the entire link, the entire file name, which is a little bit big for the cell. So we go ahead and adjust that code so we can show that. We're still going to link to the entire document, so that's not a problem. The link will just work. We're just going to update that. Great. That worked just fine. Let's go ahead and format that on the left. And then we can also reduce now. We can reduce a little bit if we'd like to. Great. So now we've linked it. We don't need to have that. We don't need to have that. And now it links perfectly. Great. That's even better. I like that better. So good. Now we've adjusted the code to show just the document name, but the link is the full link. So back into the VBA code. Let's go ahead and finish this up. So we've gone through this loop. And now we just need the last thing we do is we want to activate Microsoft Excel because our PDF is probably still active like this. So what I want to do is I want to reactivate this. And so that last line of code activates Excel using app activate and that will activate our cell. So that is it. That is how we run this entire macro. And it's really, really simple. Uh, it allows us to bring data in. Keep in mind, if you do have a lot of data, you will adjust the time. For example, when we when we launch this, I believe that there's a little bit of a slow step. Let me let me go ahead and manually show it. Format this one. When we do this and we add files and we select all, right? We know we're selecting all and we open. At this point, when you have a lot of forms, there's going to be some slowness. So the, if you have a hundred form, it will take time. It will take a little bit of time in the export, which means that you may have to uh, cancel out of that. You may have to increase. So if you have issues, all I want you to do is I want you to start increasing these times, right? Start in when you see the wait act wait now, start increasing these times to four or five or however long you want until you get things right. In fact, start out using high times and then reduce the times, reduce the times until you get it just the way you want to. So increasing these wait nows will move things slower so that you can follow what's going on. And the more data you have, it may require, it very well may require a lot more time to run this macro. So you may want to adjust those wait nows. That's the only caveat. I want to make sure that you do adjust those times so that it works perfectly for you every time. Again, just a reminder also in this folder, make sure you all of your PDFs have the same format, all the same format. That's very important so that this works without issue at all. Well, I hope you've liked this training. Uh, if you did, please share it uh, from our Excel for Freelancers pages. Also, please make sure you download the workbook either with your email or Facebook. Either one of them will work just fine. Of course, I always like when you like and share. If, if you're on YouTube, uh, if you're not, please uh, go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification icon. That really helps us out. And uh, make sure that you get new videos each and every week delivered right to you. Thanks very much. Thank you.